Dennis here with CKMP. We're in the shop today and we're going to show you guys how to do a track change. First step, uh, use your hoist and remove the pressure off the track just slightly. For the skid removal, you'll need a 17 wrench, a 17 socket, and I use a 13 millimeter wrench and I'll show you why afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna get Jason to come on in here and be my backup for the other side of the skid here with the 17. I'm gonna start by loosening this side. You're gonna see it comes out a little bit and with my 13 millimeter, I put it on the bolt like this and tighten it back up. So with this side tight, now Jason's gonna loosen that side and loosen it basically all the way. With Thank you. So now to show you why I have the 13 in there, I'm gonna use it to pry because there's a lot of Loctite on these bolts and there's a shaft inside that spins all the way. So this just puts a little pressure on the shaft and the bolt to let it slide out. There you go. Sorry. Do the exact same thing on the front bolts. Um, it's nice to use an extension just to get the gun away from the running board, but basically the exact same setup. Jason, go ahead. Go ahead and pull this bolt right out. Now that we've got the four bolts out that hold the skid in, we can lift the tunnel up a little more and pull the skid right out. Just watch when you're pulling the skid out. There's four of these, one where each bolt was. Uh, they usually fall out, but you can grab them afterwards. No big deal. I usually start with the back first. Just lift the track up nicely and Kind of wiggle the skid out the back. And pull straight backwards. Next step, now that the skid's out, we're gonna remove the hood and the panels. You'll need a Torx 25 on an impact and a long Phillips screwdriver. So start first by removing the panels. There's three clips, open. Slide up and remove. Same on this side. There are six bolts holding the hood on. Notice this is the one with the washer that goes on that side. I like to just throw my loose bolts in there. Two bolts here. Undo the electrical on the gauge. These two bolts here. Remove this. Now your electrical wires. There's two for the headlights and one for the airbox sensor. Remove those guys. And I like to tuck them up under the brake line, it keeps them out of the way. The hose clamp holding the air box together. So loosen this clamp, not all the way, just about though. Just slide the hood off just like that. Now that we have the hood off, we're gonna pull the brakes apart. And the tools you'll need, the hammer, a couple pry bars, 
flat screwdriver, a pair of snap ring pliers, a long Torx 40, a 10 millimeter with a long extension, a Torx 30, another Torx 40, short one, and a number five Allen. So to remove the cover on the brakes, it's three 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts and a Torx 30 down here. It's important to do the brake side first before the chain case, as we'll have to pry on this a little bit to get it out. And if you do the chain case side first, it'll want to uh, pull the whole drivers out. So it's very important to do the brake side first. Now that the guard's off, you can see there's a small little clip here holding the brake pad pin in. Just remove it with your screwdriver. Be sure not to lose it. Next, your five millimeter Allen. Pulls out like that. And you can see the slot where the pin needs to go. Simply pull the brake pads out. These ones are basically shot, so we'll probably put some new ones in when we go to put it back together. There's four uh, Torx 40 bolts that need to come out to be able to remove this caliper. You have to line these holes up. You can see the bolts in through here, and you have to spin this to line it up to be able to get your socket in there. There we go. I always crack them loose because they're usually fairly tight with a ratchet and then I'll use my impact afterwards. On the bottom side of the running board, there's a small hole here to get at the bottom Torx 40 bolt. And one more right here. There's a retainer on the back side of the bearing that's on, on uh, the drive shaft and we need to get the retainer off before you start prying on anything uh, or else it'll break the little tabs off in here. So simply just a flat screwdriver and a hammer, just tap the little tab down and it falls off onto the drive shaft. Last but not least, remove the snap ring off the drive shaft. Uh, it can be a little tricky once in a while, sometimes I use a Small flat blade as well. Now that we have all the bolts and the snap ring off, we will remove the caliper from the uh, bearing. And so this is the proper tool from BRP to pull it, but not many of you are gonna have that, so I'll show you another way of doing that. So I'm gonna show you how to pull it off with a couple pry bars that's pretty much just as easy. And you're gonna to wanna to come off evenly on each side. Don't pry too hard. Don't wanna bend or break anything. Should come off not too bad. Now that we got it off the shaft, um, you can leave this, the caliper, hooked up to the brake line. It's out of the way enough, that way you won't have to re-bleed your brakes. And we're done on this side, and now we'll go off to the chain case side. Now that we're on the chain case side, here's the tools you'll need to get into the chain case. Flat blade screwdriver, a Torx 30, a Torx 40, 10 millimeter socket with a long extension, spring puller for the exhaust, and some snap, snap ring pliers and an oil catch. Spring puller, remove these two springs. There's a 10 millimeter bolt with a spring on it. Loosen that. Now 
pull it out or else it usually goes flying when you pull the exhaust out. That way you don't lose it. As you're removing the exhaust, there's a, a sensor connection down here. Make sure to unplug that before you pull it out. Okay, make sure to put your oil catch underneath the chain case. Once we start taking the bolts out, it'll start draining a bit of fluid. Any sleds that have the shot, you're gonna have to unplug it from the sled. Also, the speedometer plug-in is down here. You need to pull it out. And this little guy is gonna have to come off. So with your flat blade screwdriver, nicely, just pry it off. And you can put it back on after. Now that you're here with your flat blade, just pop this little rubber grommet off and put it out of the way like that. Once you put it away like that, don't forget about it. It's easy to. Next thing is to pull all the bolts around the chain case. So there'll be eight Torx 30s, two Torx 40s, and two 10 millimeter bolts to pull this whole cover off. And I'm gonna start with the Torx 30s. the Torx 30s. Now I'm going to do the 10 millimeter. And this one's a little tricky. There's a hole underneath here to get to the bottom one. The other 10 millimeter is on the foot rest right here. the Torx 30s. Now I'm going to do the 10 millimeter. And this one's a little tricky. There's a hole underneath here to get to the bottom one. The other 10 millimeter is on the foot rest right here. And two Torx 30s. You know, you'll notice this one in the middle has a copper washer on it. Just make sure it goes back in the same spot. Now to just get your coolant tank out of the way, um, just pry back a little bit or you can pull it right off. Just like that and put it out of the way. And now this should come right off. Now that the cover's off, uh, we're gonna loosen the chain with our Torx 25 that I didn't mention before. Um, and you can loosen it off quite a ways as we have to get the chain off the sprocket. Now that that's loose, grab your snap ring pliers and we'll pull the snap ring off the bottom gear. Now that the snap ring's off, we can go ahead and remove our bottom gear. Wiggle back and forth on either side. And it comes off just like that. Now to get the drivers out of the chassis, I just uh, get the track and put it up as far as you can go so the teeth aren't connected to uh, any of the holes in the track. And we'll slide towards the brake side and then down out on the chain case side. And it'll take a little bit of wiggling around. Just like that. Next, we'll pull the track out and we'll get the new one, make sure it's going the right way, and we'll reverse the steps. Once you got the track laid out directly behind the snowmobile, look for uh, the directional arrows. That means the track's gonna be going on the right way. You don't wanna do this twice. Basically, the exact same setup. Hold the track up as much as you can. Slide the brake side in first. 
And then slide into the chain case. There we go. Now for chain tension, uh, you're not gonna, you're pretty much going to want to be hand tight. You're not going to be want to be putting too much pressure on the ratchet, um, just so it's snug and you can see how much it moves there. Not a lot, but still enough. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. That looks pretty good right there. Just put the chain case cover back on, just like so. Careful not to strip these as it is aluminum and it can happen. For the oil, we use XPS, synthetic blend. Um, they come at the, the right amount in there, so put the whole thing in and you don't have to measure anything out. Small funnel right in here and slowly pour it in. Now if the oil's in, don't forget your rubber grommet. And if you do, you'll have oil splashing all over. Now just put the exhaust on and this side's good to go. So now that we're on the brake side, first things first is the bearing retainer on the back side of the tunnel. We're gonna line it up. Now that it's started, a little tap with a hammer and a pry bar, and it'll put it right into place. And you'll know you're in place because you can see the threads on all four bolt holes. Next thing to put the caliper on, I'm gonna put some never seize on the back of here just so it doesn't rust onto the bearing. That way, if you ever have to pull it off for any reason, it should be easier than the first time. There we go. On the bolts that hold the caliper on, I use blue, blue Loctite just to make sure they don't come off. You don't want your brakes coming loose. And they're all tight. Next is your snap ring. Make sure it goes into place. Sometimes I even give a little tap on it just to set it in there nicely. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna put the old brakes back on. They're still not too bad. Uh, get a little bit more life out of them. So, let's stick them in like that. And this one's not quite fitting. So, with the one brake pad in there, we can get in and just pry the, uh, the piston over just a little bit. And there we have it. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. And uh, don't forget your pin on the back. There, ready for the cover. There we have it. Give your brakes a couple pumps. Pump your brakes a little bit, get them back. So before we put the skid in, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tape these bushings in so they don't fall out when you're putting it in under the snowmobile because you'll be forever fighting them. They just come in and out. So just nicely, doesn't have to be too fancy. That way it can't fall out. It is gonna stay on there, it's not gonna affect anything. It just stays on. The only other thing that a guy can do to make your life easier is loosen off the back wheels and slide them all the way forward. You'll need a 13 millimeter wrench and ratchet. That way your wheels will slide ahead and it'll be easier to get in the track. Okay, now that I have my assistant here, we'll put the skid in. A lot nicer with two guys. A 
We'll start with the front bolts first. down a little bit. Back ones are actually easier. So before we forget, let's tighten the track back up. I like to lift it way up, that way I don't have to bend over. Okay, now that we have the hood and the panels all on, that's it for the track change. Hope you guys learned something, and we'll see you again next time.